Hi, everybody. It's Tuesday. I've missed you so, so much. The weekends just seem to be really long, which I'm not complaining about, but it just feels like the stretch from like the last time we see each other, the last time we've seen each other to now is like a really long time. And I didn't do a live on Friday because it was like a holiday weekend. And I had some things that I actually needed to take care of that I needed a weekday for. I missed you guys so much. So, so much. I'm so happy to be with you guys today. You guys, this week, I'm a little excited. I'm a little excited because this project is phenomenal. The Hardwired project is phenomenal. The kits for Friday's show are phenomenal. Like, you guys, you don't understand. Like, this is going to be a good week. It's going to be a good one. I hope you're ready. So buckle up, Buttercup. We've got this. <laughs> um, so I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good. So let's talk. Let's talk about it. I have a live today with a really cool project for you guys. I've got macrame on the brain. That kind of happens when the weather starts getting warmer and it is definitely like heating up around here. Um, I saw that in Johannesburg it is cold. I would trade you in a minute. I would trade you. I would so much rather it be cold. But I do love warm weather jewelry. And a lot of that with me includes macrame, cord, or something of that nature. So this is kind of a combo. There's a little bit of wire wrapping. There's some macrame. There's some chain involved. Like this is a really cool, different looking kind of project where we're going to use macrame to make a bail for something. And the way that I've incorporated it into this project, you can actually use it in a lot of different ways. So I'm hoping to inspire you uh, as always. Um, tomorrow, I do have a Michaels class that is at one 2 p.m. Eastern time. I always get them mixed up because Wednesdays and Saturdays times are a little bit different. But since it is a Wednesdays Michaels class, it will be at 2 p.m. Eastern time tomorrow. I'm making some earrings. Um, they're really kind of simple, but not simple. It's it's an interesting class. I hope that you've got some time to come and check it out. But if you can't, you definitely can come and watch the replay, which happens over on the Michaels YouTube channel. It happens about 24 to 48 hours after the actual class. So if you miss the live, you can always come back and watch the replay. Uh, Friday is our Feel Good Friday show. And you guys, I've got, I've got two bracelets, three earrings, and a maker mix coming your way for Friday. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, it's going to be a cool one. And then our hardwired stuff going on. We've got a great project today. Uh, and then our Friday, we're going to do something a little different that I'm looking forward to as well. So if you're part of the hardwired group, like there's just a lot of stuff going on this week. And I'm really excited about it. And I feel like I'm on top of things, knock on wood. I feel like I'm on top of things this week, which I normally am feeling rushed and like trying to get caught up. But uh, I actually have enough time this week to actually go out into the world and take care of the things that I didn't get taken care of on Friday. That's what people don't seem to understand. Like I had a little bit of grief on Friday. Before we get into the project, just, just a little side note for some of you. Um, on Friday... I didn't do a Feel Good Friday show, which is always a difficult choice for me to make because Feel Good Friday shows, that's my income. Like that's where my income comes from. So if I miss a Feel Good Friday show, I don't get paid for the week. And so you have to like, I mean, you don't have to, but take that into consideration when you're like, oh, I wish that she had done a Feel Good Friday show. Dogs. Um, I wish that she'd done a Feel Good Friday show. Why isn't she here? Like, keep in mind, like, that's hurting me actually a lot more than it's hurting you because, again, that's my income that I'm missing for a week. Um, but also, people, I think, assume that just because you work at home or that I do these lives, that, like, that's the only thing that I do. And that's absolutely 100% not true. Like, I prep for the entire week all week long. I work nine to five, sometimes nine to eight, sometimes nine to two o'clock in the morning, depending on what's going on. And if I have to do things in the rest of the world, just like you guys do, like, so if you, if you go to a job and you sit behind a desk all day, but you, you've got to go to the DMV or you've got to go to the doctor, you've got to go to the dentist or whatever, you have to do those things like during the weekdays when those things are available. It's the same thing with me just because, um, you know, just because I work from home doesn't mean that I can just pick up and go and take care of those things anytime I want to. Doggos, that's enough. Sorry, they get a little crazy. Zena's here and like, 
yeah. So anyway, all I'm saying is that like, I'm just like you guys. So please don't get mad at me if occasionally I have to miss a show because you know, I, I do have to like do normal things like other people do too. And I can't do those things on the weekend. So I apologize for not being here on Friday, but thank you for being understanding. <laughs> Except for those of you who weren't and you can just take a seat. <laughs> I'm, I'm only kidding. I'm only kidding. Oh my gosh. But yeah, thank you. I am allowed to have a day off. Except that those days off are never like really good days off. They're like, oh, I have to go to stand in line at the DMV. Like who wants to do that? <laughs> That's no fun. Be different if I was doing something fun. Albert, my friend, Albert. A little crazy with the barking. Oh man. So anyway. No, I know. Patty says you shouldn't feel like you need to make excuses. No one should make you feel that way. I know. But I did have a run in with somebody on Friday who was just a little snarky with me about things. And um, it made me feel bad. Like it really did. It made me feel really bad. Um, so yeah, I, I feel guilty when I'm not here with you guys. Plus the fact that I just miss you. Albert, I'm so sorry. I don't even know what he's barking at, to be completely honest with you. Like, I do know that when the washing machine is going, Zena barks at the washing machine all day. <laughs> I'm not even doing it. Oh, the washing machine is running. My bad. <laughs> I don't even know what I did 15 minutes ago, okay? <laughs> They're barking at the washing machine. What? Okay, so I've got a project for you guys today. I'm really excited to show this to you guys. Um, this is a wire wrapping, chain involved, like macrame project that's just super cool. And I hope that you take the macrame part of this and you incorporate it in different ways into your jewelry making. That's really what the goal is here. So without further ado, let's get to it, shall we? I've done a lot of talking and I apologize. But I just gotta say those things sometimes, you know, like everybody needs a reminder. I, I got a lot of stuff on my plate too, just like you guys do. All right, so check it out. What we're going to start with is the bale of this project. And the bale is actually made out of macrame. You can, of course, make bales out of just about anything. Wire wrapping is usually the way that it goes. But I thought it would be cool to show you something a little different. So we're going to do a little macrame using some s -Lon. We're also using some beads that came from Sam's bead box for the month of May. And they are these really awesome electroplated rose gold lava beads, which I'm absolutely obsessed with. So I used these in some other projects and still had some leftovers. So we're going to use these as our little, our little focal here. Now, that being said, I was digging around to try to find a focal that I had to, to use that this could sit on top of. And I found this leaf that I patinaed in a video a long time ago, I don't even remember what we were doing, but I had the patina paints out and I used the rose gold and a combination of like this turquoisey color. And I thought that would be the perfect little thing to add my beads to the front of. However, if you don't have something like this, you don't have patina paints, that's okay. Another great alternative is if you've got Sam's bead box, this past May bead box had this really awesome tiara cast leaf or feather in it. And this would look really good on top of it as well. Maybe with smaller beads, but either either is going to work. Like just find something cool to, I like to layer things up. So that's what I was going for. Or don't layer anything up at all. And you can just use these, put a jump ring on them and an ear wire and make earrings out of them. So again, I'm trying to inspire you here. We're going to do square knots, which we've done a million times before. But really, I'm hoping that you're going to look at macrame in different ways to incorporate it into your jewelry. All right, so let's get started. The first thing that we're going to do is we are going to create this little thing that's going to sit on top of our leaf here. So I'm going to use some Eslon. I've got Eslon. It comes in a lot of different colors. Everybody asks, not everybody, but a lot of times people will ask me about the size of the Eslon. Honestly, when it comes to buying Eslon, I don't go for the size. Do, does it come in different sizes? It does. It comes in different diameters, but that's not the way I shop for it. I shop for it by color. So I honestly have no idea what size this is. Um, colors, Eslon. When it comes to great neutrals, Beelon from Beelon is the way to go. In fact, it's a little bit, um, it has a little bit different texture to it. Like it's almost got a little sticky substance on it. I don't know what it is, but it, the knots with Beelon stay, like they, they grip onto each other. 
the S one is very, very slippery. So you do have to like kind of give that up when you go for a color with S one, but I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it. So I'm going to, I cut two pieces that are about 24 inches each. That's, that's excessive, but it's better to have more than you need than not enough. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take one of those 24 inch pieces of Eslon and I'm going to thread. Well, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the middle. So I'm going to bring my ends together and then I'm going to find the middle. Okay. Now my middle, I need to go to either the left or to the right of the middle about two inches and then tie an overhanded knot that you loop through twice. Okay. So basically a surgeon's knot. So I'm going to loop it and then I'm going to loop my end through once. Totally forgot the washing machine was going. I'm so sorry. Of course, that's what they were barking at. My goodness. All right. So I loop it through twice. And when I pull that knot down, it just makes a chunkier, kind of thicker knot. It's almost like a little miniature barrel knot, if you will. And that's just to make sure that the knot doesn't slide through the hole of my beads. Okay, so there's the first one. There's our first knot. You can see it makes just kind of a chunky monkey knot. Okay, now I'm going to take my lava beads here. I need four of the lava beads. You can use whatever kind of beads you want to. Um, I just really, really like these. For one thing, they've got a nice big hole in them, and I do have to go through one of them twice. So, all right, I'm going to thread on. Yeah, you can also wax it for sure. So I'm going to thread this on, bring it down next to my knot, and now I'm going to tie another knot. So same thing. I want to loop it through twice. Okay. And then I'm going to start to pull that knot down and I'm going to use my beading awl. Now, if you don't have a beading awl, use a T-pin, use a, um, a safety pin. What happened to my beading awl? Oh, okay. Whatever, whatever you've got to just kind of put it down, this is going to help you to tighten your knot up and to bring that knot like right down close to the edge. The reason I'm not using my knotter tool for this is because I'm doing that double kind of surgeon's knot. And I just can't do that with the uh, knotter tool. So there's one. I'm going to thread on another one. Drop that down. Okay, and I'm going to do another knot. Katie says she sucks at square knots. I'll help you. I got you. Just takes a little bit of practice. All right, beating all. And then, whoops, pull it down a little bit. There's our second knot. Do another one. Okay, and then we're doing another one. So we overhanded knot, just like that. We're gonna pull down. Okay, there we go. All right, so we've got three here. Okay, now to make our little cutesy little shape here, we're gonna go through another bead both directions with ends with both ends so let me show you okay so I'm going to thread on just like that with one end and then I'm going to take the other end and I'm going to go through that same bead going the other direction and you might have to wiggle it a little bit that's why I look for a bead for this that's got a nice large drill hole on it I mean it doesn't have to be an, a huge hole you can see it's not like it's a big hole but it's definitely big enough to accommodate two pieces of the s -Lon. So take the s -lon through the other direction and then pull. And when you pull this down, you've got a little, uh, and it's, it's kind of, it's kind of trickery here, if you will. It looks like it's knotted, right? Because there are the knots sitting on either side that were knots on the sides of these beads, but we're really not knotting anything. We're leaving it just like it is. It's, it's all pretend. <laughs> It's an illusion, right? But we've made this cute little circle of beads, little flower, whatever you want to call it, right? 
Okay, so now there's no knotting to do because there are the knots that are there. It makes the whole thing look like it's all knotted together. But now we want to take our two pieces of S line and we want to bring them up here to the top. Now this is going to work if you want to make a bale out of anything, or not a bale out of anything, but if you want to make a macrame bale with other things, you're going to set this up basically the same way. You don't have to do the knots or any of that stuff, but you do want to kind of set this part up where you've got a piece of Eslon running through something, whether it's a jump ring, a bale bead, uh, you know, a drill hole, whatever it happens to be, you can, you can achieve this exact same kind of macrame bale. Okay. All right. So I've turned it upside down. My ends are coming down this way. I'm going to bring in the tying station here in just a second, but I got to get this started first. Okay. So if you need uh, to tape this down with some painter's tape, that'll work as well. Take your other piece of a 24 inch piece of your S lawn and we're going to bring it behind these two pieces that are coming down from our, our little beads here. And we're going to find the ends so we can really kind of make this the middle. Okay. Now I do kind of feel like I need some tape here. Hold on just a second. Now I don't necessarily need the tape, but I feel like it's going to help me show you a little bit better. So let me grab some and I'm actually going to move this bead mat out of the way. So also don't want to knock over my drink here. Okay, let's do this again. <laughs> let's try this one more time. Okay, because I want you to, I, like, I know not everybody has a tying station, so you can do this and you don't even need the tying station, but just to get started, I just want to secure everything down. So I'm just going to put a piece of painter's tape down. Okay. Then I'm going to take another piece of painter's tape. I'm going to bring my two ends together here. Hold on. Just like that. And then I'm going to tape those down. This is just to get started. Okay. This is just to get us started. So everything's nice and secure. All right. Let's, let's go again. We're going to take our cord. We're going underneath. And we're just going to do this first initial square knot, making sure the ends come together. Okay. All right. So square knot happens in two steps. Okay. We've done this before, but it never hurts to see it again in slow, slow motion. So we're going to take the right cord and we're going to make a P shape. And the P shape with our right cord goes over the top of the core. Whatever your core is. For us, it's two pieces of s -lon coming out of this bead. For another project, it could be any number of things, okay? So it's coming out this way. Now we're going to take that left-handed cord, and we want to make sure it crosses over the top of that cord that's running out this way now. And then we're going behind. Hold on, i got to get to the end of my cord here. We're going behind the two core pieces and up through that P shape that we just made and then we're going to pull. Now I realize the first square knot is always the one that looks the weirdest. So just bear with me. Okay. And then I'm going to pull. And when I pull, I want to bring that down here kind of to the top centered up over this bead, right? Or underneath since we've got it upside down at the moment. So that's step one. Step two, we just have to repeat that. But we're doing the mirror of that. So we're making a backwards P shape or a Q shape. Again, our cord that's making that shape runs across the top of our center core. Our opposite cord crosses over the top of that, but then goes behind our core and up through. Sorry, a little tricky here since I don't have the tying station to get my. Okay, and it goes up through that P shape or that Q shape that we just made. This may slide around on you. Just pull it right back up there where it goes and set it before you pull that second knot or the second step of that knot. So hold on. Pull. And then pull. Okay. So now you've got yourself a square knot, your first square knot. I'm going to take this off of this. Okay. That just kind of sets everything ready to go. We're going to do about 14 more square knots. So you're going to get to see me do the square knots over and over again. It's the first one that's always the most tricky. 
every time. And it's just because things are not secure, right? And the cord hasn't been attached to the core yet. Now that we've got that first knot out of the way, we've got a little bit more room to like get in there and get these knots done. So what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to bring in the tying station. I'm going to use it in kind of a weird way. If you don't have a tying station, that's okay. Just keep using your painter's tape, okay, um, for your project. Now, sometimes I get asked, you guys are actually going to see this, see me use these little holes in the tying station more than once this week. Sometimes I get asked about the holes on the tying station on this acrylic plate. And to be completely truthful with you, I don't really know exactly what they're used for, but they do come in handy for things like this. Okay, so let me show you what I mean. I'm actually going to turn my acrylic plate with the holes in it this direction, and I'm going to attach a piece of wire right here to this bottom hole. And I'm going to use that to connect this because I can't connect this here. I mean, I probably could wiggle it over the peg if I wanted to and then use like the squishy end, but I don't, I just don't want to. So what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to take a scrap piece of wire and I'm going to thread it through that last hole on the acrylic plate. It might take a little wiggling. Okay. So I've got this little this and I tightened this down. So now this is not going to wiggle. Okay. And then I'm going to thread on my little beaded piece here. And then I'm just going to take my wire like a twisty tie. Okay. Now I've attached this to the tying station. It still has a little bit of wiggle, but it's attached. That's the most important part. So like, if you don't have this, use your painter's tape to keep this attached. But now I can take my two core cords down here to the bottom of my tying station and slip them underneath the acrylic plate down here and tighten it down. And now I can do my macrame and everything is secure. Okay. So the only problem is that I do need to twist this just a little. Try to get this this way. All right, so now we're gonna do our knots. Okay, this part is attached, and now we're gonna do our knotting. So I've done one knot. I want to do about fourteen, and the reason I'm doing so many is because we gotta loop them over to make ourselves a little bail. Okay, so now. <laughs> We're going to repeat our square knot. So you're going to get to see this a bunch of times. So if you struggle with your square knots, I'm going to break it down for you. Okay. So P shape with our right handed cord and it goes over the core. Okay. Our left handed cord crosses over the top of that and then goes behind and up through that P shape. And then we pull and that's the first step of the knot. The second step happens in the mirror of that. Okay, so and the, the square knot happens in two steps. You got to do both steps or you're going to end up with a spiral. Okay, so our left-handed cord makes our backwards P-shape or your Q shape. The right-handed cord crosses over the top of that, goes behind the core and up through oh. that P-shape. Albert, no, sir. And then pull. Okay that makes a square knot. So it has to happen in both steps. You've got to do both. Okay. All right. We're going to keep going. P shape on the right core. We're going across the top of the core. Left-handed cord crosses over the one that's coming out this direction and then goes behind. I can hold on to it. Behind and up through that P shape and pull. And then we want to do the exact same thing, just on the left. Q shape goes over the core. Right-handed cord crosses over that, goes behind and up through that Q shape and pull. Okay. So now you can take a look and you can actually see like how many of the knots we have based on the little bumps. So to count my knots, I always count 
on the right-handed side and the bump, right, is like the belt holding the pants up. There's one, two, and three. That lets me know I've completed three knots. If you have to sit your work down and walk away from it and you come back and you look at it and you don't have a full bump on the right side where you stopped, then that means you still need to do the left-handed side of your knot to complete it. So that way you can kind of keep up with it. Like if you walk away and you come back and you're like, I don't know if I did the right side and then the left side, or, you know, I don't know where I stopped. You can always look by counting the little bumps. Okay. <clears throat> All right. So now we're just going to keep going because we've got three. So we need to do, we need to do several more and I'm going to speed it up a little bit and then we'll slow it back down. Okay, so there's the right cord. Here's the left cord for four. Right cord. Left cord. Pull. Okay, P shape. Behind and up through our Q shape, behind and up through, and pull. Okay. Our P shape, left cord goes over that, behind and up through, and pull. Our left cord makes our Q shape. The right cord crosses over that, goes behind and up through. Hi, Jan. Okay. I'll lower, your, lower you down a little bit. Maybe that'll help some too. Okay. Ooh. Oh, thank you, Peggy. I am working on my tan. How do you know? <laughs> you know <laughs> all right so i'm usually like ghost white so if i have any color at all it's definitely noticeable all right our p shape with our right-handed cord is going across the top okay then our left cord crosses over this cord that's now running out this direction okay then we go behind everything and up through that p shape that we made on the right-handed side and we pull and then we do the exact same thing, but we do it over here on the left and we do it backwards. So we've got our backwards P shape. Our cord's now running out this direction. We take our right cord, cross over the top of that, but then we go behind the core and up through that Q shape that we just made and pull. And then that's a full knot, okay? So let's count again. We're going to count the little bumps. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So we've got eight so far. We need seven more to go. Okay. And I'm going to speed up again. So there's the right and the left. Oops, there's the right and the left. Right and then the left. right and then the left okay now i wasn't keeping track of how many so we're going to count again one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve we need three more okay Let's zip through these kind of quick here Oh. 
these nails, I've got to cut these. Well, I'm not going to cut them, but I'm going to have them shortened when I go back. <laughs> They're so long now that like I am, I'm really struggling to, to do things. Okay. Oh, I got to finish that one. <laughs> Jess says she can do this in her sleep after me saying, I love that. I love that. It's funny because I hear that a lot. People will be like, when I'm making rap loops, I hear your voice in my head. I'm like, mm, that that's a little creepy, but also totally understandable. <laughs> <coughs> okay. So we've got all of our knots here. Okay, now we need to take this off of the tying station. So we're going to untwist our little twisty tie that we made with our wire. And we're going to take this off uh -oh, of the wire. And then I'm going to let, I'm going to get it free down here. Okay. So. Now what we want to do is we want to turn our little knotted section into a loop, right? So in the original, let me show you what I did here. So in the original, it's kind of a hot mess and it's, it's difficult for you to see. But in the original, I, I cut off the core. I'm not going to cut off the core this time. I'm actually going to leave the core. Um, and then I melted and glued the ends. It's kind of a mess. So today I want to make it a little bit nicer. So what I want to do is I want to take all of my knots here and I just want to kind of form a little loop with them just by holding them like this. Okay. Now I'm going to take the core, just leave the core, come in this direction. It's still the core. I'm going to take my right-handed cord and I want to wrap all the way around the front and back to the, the back back here. And then I'm going to do the same thing with this one on the left. I'm going to wrap it all the way around the front and bring it back here to the back. Now it's a little tricky because it's kind of hard to hold on to. But what you want to do is you just want to, after you've wrapped those around, you just want to tie an overhanded knot with them. And again, it's, it's going to be kind of loose in the beginning, but once you tighten it all down, it'll, it'll look better. So just need to tie the knot, which is the hard part at the moment. So just, it's just an overhanded knot. And actually let's, if we tape it down, it might be a little bit easier. Gotta love painter's tape because it does not leave residue on anything, which is nice, right? So we do this. Put a little piece of tape on that just for a second. Okay. Now it's a little crooked. That's okay. I'm not super worried about it. I am worried about these dumb fingernails and being able to pick things up though. All right. So I'm wrapping the one cord all the way around this direction. So my left cord will be on the right. My right cord will be on the left. <laughs> these fingernails oh my gosh come on now I can do these things okay now I'm gonna tie tie them in a knot <laughs> just by tying it over and a knot oh my goodness and I'm gonna pull that down and then I'm gonna pull that those two core pieces And pull my knots again. Okay, now before I double this over. Yeah, alligator clip would be perfect. Okay, before I double this knot. I want to pull the core a little bit more just to kind of tighten. Make sure there's no extra wiggle room in there. Okay. Now I'm going to overhanded knot those two again. 
pull that down really, really tight. Really, really tight. Okay. All right. So now I'm leaving the core just for a second. And all I have to deal with at the moment are these two pieces that we tied in knots to secure everything. Okay. So what I want to do is I want to cut these off kind of short just so that I don't get them mixed in with the core cords. So I'm going to come in and cut off about like that. I am going to trim more of this off in a minute, but just for now, just so that it's manageable, we're going to leave it just like that. Okay. I'm going to come in with a little bit of hypo cement. Oh, well, look at that. <laughs> It's pretty. <laughs> and I'm going to do that little dab of glue on either side. I don't know what that voice was. Don't judge me. I'm going to add some glue to that knot. I'm going to let that sit for a second. Now you can melt the nylon and we are going to do that, but we got to do some other things first before I bring out the flames because that's when things could really just go downhill and I want to give myself as much time as possible before I totally ruin things. Okay, so the core, I'm actually going to use it this time to add some little dangles that are going to be going behind everything. You don't have to do that. You can just leave it plain just like I did here. There's nothing hanging around the back, coming down from the back. But I want to be extra because that's how I roll. And so I'm going to use some of these little green beads. I'm going to do two on each side. There are more of these beads in this design, so you'll actually get to, um, you'll actually get to see these again. I'm just going to thread two of these on. Oh, thank you, Julie. I'm feeling pretty happy. Um, Q has been in Brooklyn for the past like four days and he's, he's home today and, also, my kids come home from their dads tomorrow and the sun is shining and the laundry is almost done. And like, I'm just, um, I'm feeling good about all the projects this week. So yeah, I'm in a pretty good mood. <laughs> all right. So now I'm going to tie some knots in these so that they're going to hang from the back. And you don't have to do this part at all. Like I said, you can make it nice and clean if you want to, but, and I'm going to do the surgeon's knot just by looping it through twice. Nah, Andrea, they don't need to go. They just need to be shorter. It's just because I haven't, I haven't had them shortened since the last time. All right, so there's one. Okay, I'm going to do the other one as well. Okay, this one, I want it to hang at a, a little bit different length, maybe a little longer or shorter, just kind of depends. Pull it up here with my awl. Let's kind of look at it and see. That's good. Okay, so now when I look at it from the front, you can see I have these two little dangles. I don't know. Just something different than the original. And then I'm going to come in and I'm going to trim off. Okay. All right. Now what I got to do is I got to deal with these two ends. And to deal with those two ends, I'm going to trim them off a little bit shorter and then I'm going to melt them. Okay. And that's the cool thing about s -lon and B-Lon. Since it's nylon, it will melt nicely, uh, which means that you can... Um, you can melt it off and stick it to itself, which I think is absolutely brilliant because it keeps you from having to use so much glue. So I'm going to trim it pretty close, not super, super close. And then I'm going to use some flame here. You just want to get close to it. You can use a thread burner as well. You don't have to use a grill lighter. I'm, I'm extra with everything. Just melt that down. And then if you'll kind of push it down like that, it just melts it right up against the work. Okay. And it's pretty clean, particularly when it's on the back of something, which is nice. You could, yeah, you could make dangles out of these ends too, if you wanted to. Absolutely. 
Okay. Melt it down and then I just kind of tap it with my finger. Okay. Get rid of any of the little wispies that are left behind. And all of that is on the back. So now you've got yourself a little, how cute is that? So you can use these for all kinds of things. Like we're going to add ours to our necklace, but honestly, you add ear wire to this and make earrings out of it. You can make keychains like this. Like there's so many options, little charms, anything you want to do. And instead of using wire to do a wire bell, we've just used something that's a little bit more lightweight and a little bit easier for some people to work with because not everybody does wire. Right. I kind of take that for granted sometimes that everybody works with wire and that's just not so. So if you're more comfortable using cord, this is definitely going to be um, a little bit better. Let's see. Uh, question. Can you use the flame with s -Lon and b -Lon and c -Lon? Yes, you can, Jennifer. You absolutely can. So here's the difference with the dangles, without the dangles. Totally up to you. I just thought it was cute. You know how I am. Okay, so I'm actually going to go ahead and attach this to our, our leaf here. And to do that, I'm going to use two jump rings. Now, my necklace here has mixed metals, so I'm using silver and antique copper. I'm going to use an antique copper jump ring to go through my little bale. And then I'm going to use the silver jump ring to attach it to our leaf. Okay, so attach that one. And then I'm going to use just a larger jump ring here. I'm going to attach it to that jump ring. That's just make sure everything hangs front facing. Okay, then I'm going to attach that to the top of our little leaf. Then I'm going to attach that to our decorative ring, which is going to be in the center of our necklace. And close all that back. So we just built the focal for our necklace. I think it's pretty darn cute, not gonna lie. I think it's pretty darn cute. It's the color combination for me. It's this beautiful rose gold with this teal that I think is just really, really cool. But honestly, any color combination would work. It does not have to be a leaf. If you had a really cool filigree piece, you could put on the back and then like do a little beaded thing here in the front. Like I just love stacking focals when I have the opportunity to. I think that it just looks really, really cool. It just adds texture and dimension. There's so much texture going on here. We have the smoothness of the beads. We have the texture of the leaf, the texture of the knots, the texture of the beads, and then the texture of our ring. Like this is, it's got a lot going on, but it all works together. And this antique copper color really kind of brings everything down so that it's not so bright and bold and in your face. Okay, so now we're just going to do the necklace part of this. And that part is we're going to work up really, really quickly. We're going to do three little wrapped loop sections to make ourselves a little wrapped loop chain um, with some beads. We're using some more of those green beads, some of those electroplated rose gold lava beads, some uh, bead caps for that antique copper. And then those are just going to come up from either side of our ring. So one of them's already done. We're going to do one of them together so we can do some wrapped loops together because that's my favorite thing to do with you guys. Let me grab all my beads, round all those up. Okay, so for our little chain, we're just going to use some 22 gauge wire, okay? And you just need about three inches of 22 gauge wire. We're going to make a wrap loop on one end. So we're going to come in with our chain nose pliers, grabbing that wire. We're going to give it a bend, make ourselves like a backwards seven. We're going to come in with our round nose pliers, grabbing the wire. We're going to take it up and over the top barrel of the pliers, rotate those pliers, take the wire over to the other side. And then we just want to wire wrap. I'm going to wire wrap about three times. Okay. And then I'm going to trim off the excess. So we've just made ourselves an eye pin with a wrapped loop. I'm going to thread on one of our little green beads. I'm going to do a bead cap just to incorporate that antique copper with our silver. Two of the lava beads. Okay. 
Okay, another bead cap and then another green bead. And then we're gonna do another wrapped loop. So I'm grabbing the wire where it is exiting the bead, bend it over the top of the pliers. Round nose pliers in, we're going up and over. Rotate, take the wire over to the other side and then wire wrap. Okay, so we've made our first little beaded section here. Sorry about the wiggling with the camera. Okay, I'm gonna trim off the excess. If you need to tuck any of that in with your pliers, do that. And now we're gonna do two more of these and we're gonna, we're gonna attach them directly to this. We're not gonna use any jump rings in between here. So I'm gonna start my next wrapped loop. Okay. Going up and over, rotate. Take the wire over. Now, before I do the wire wraps, though, I want to take the tail end of this and I want to thread it through one of the loops, doesn't matter which one of the piece we just worked on. So I'm going to take it, thread it through, and then I just want to kind of wiggle to snap those two together. Okay. Then I'm going to come in with my bent chain nose pliers to hold on to that loop. Just keeps the pliers out of the way. And then I'm going to wire wrap. And I'm going to trim off. Okay, now I'm ready to start another little beaded section. So we've got a green bead, a bead cap, two lava beads, a bead cap, and a green bead. We're going to do another wrapped loop. up and over, the wire over to the other side. You can even use your pliers to do the wire wrapping if you want to. Okay, we're coming in to trim off any of the excess wire. And we're gonna do one more. Okay, so we start our wrapped loop. Yes, Jennifer, it's 22 gauge wire. I'm sorry, I thought I said that, but I may have missed that part. I'm sorry, 22 gauge wire. You only need about three inch pieces and you need like, you know, for however many beaded sections you're gonna do. So we started our loop, take the tail end of that, slide it through the loop of the last one and then loop that together. And then grab the wire with our bent chain nose pliers and we're gonna wrap. Hi, Pauline. It's 22 gauge wire. Trim. <laughs> You're good. You're good. Okay. And then we're going to thread bead. Bead. Y'all are good. Y'all are good. I realize there's a little bit of a delay, so no worries. No worries. Okay, bead cap, and then our last little green bead. Are the little green till beads from Sam? You know what? I'm not real sure where they came from. They could have been. They weren't in a Sam's bag, though, so I'm thinking maybe not. I'm not real sure, Wanda. They, they very well could have been, but I don't remember. All right, so wrapped loop here. We're almost ready to just assemble. So everything else really after this point is just putting things together. Bend over, rotate, take the wire over to the other side. And then we're gonna wire wrap in that space. They look like some I got from Bargain Bee Box. That might be where they came from, which might explain why they weren't in a Sam's bag. Okay, and then I'm going to trim off the excess and this section of chain is done. So you're going to do two of these, um, one for each side, right? 
So we've got our little beaded chain and then we've got a little beaded chain for the other side as well. And then the rest of this is just, like I said, it's just assembly. So I've got some chain here. I got this chain from Lipstick Ranch. I adore Lipstick Ranch. Um, haven't talked to them in a while. I probably need to reach out and touch base with them because it's been a minute. But they have some of the coolest stuff ever at Lipstick Ranch. If you've never checked them out, I highly recommend going and checking out their pendants and their chain. Those are my two favorite things from them. All of the pendants that they make are amazing. And then they have the coolest chain ever. So this is some antique copper chain. I just added a really cool decorative um, clasp to it. But you can see the chain has like... It has texture to it. The color is so rich and just wonderful. So using some large length, large link rather, chain from Lipstick Ranch. And that's just going to serve as the length of my necklace. But it also brings in some more of that antique brass or antique copper. If you don't want to use chain because chain is too much for you when the weather is hot, I would recommend like a piece of sari ribbon. Uh, any kind of ribbon, honestly, would be beautiful with this for the length or just some more macrame, right? You could macrame a, a whole section for the length part of the necklace. All right, so I'm just gonna use some jump rings to put everything together here. I'm gonna raise you guys up just a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna use jump rings to attach my chain pieces to my focal here. So jump ring, going through the loop the decorative ring, and then through the loop on my beaded section. So there's that one. And the same thing to the other. Donna says they have decent prices. They do. They really do. And Lipstick Ranch, like, they're such good people. They really are. And just, their stuff is just so good. It really is. And I love their selection of chain because it's, there's a lot of different ones to choose from. It's a great place if you're looking for copper, like for real. I mean, cause you can get, you can get copper chain at other places like fire mountain gyms or whatever, but like they have the coolest like specialty chain. All right. So we've got all of this together. The last thing we need to do is just add our length to this. I want my clasp to be here in the front. I'm just going to attach the other end with a jump ring. Two jump rings is how I'm going to do it. I'm just keeping it as easy as possible. So jump ring on this end. And my clasp will attach to this one. And then a jump ring on this side just to connect the chain. Oh, if you've never heard of them, check them out. They're called Lipstick Ranch. They're a small business. They're very well known in the industry. They're just really great people. I'll, I'll show you some of the other stuff I've got from Lipstick Ranch. Hold on. All right. And that's it. So our necklace is done. I'm going to show it to you on the bust in a minute so you can see all of it because it's hard to see here laying flat. Okay. But since we're talking about Lipstick Ranch, let me pull out some of the stuff that they got. So they're um, the pendants that they have that they make themselves. Oh my gosh. They're so awesome. So check it out. They're all copper and they're all like artisan, handmade, just awesomeness. I love them. There's a cactus. I got this in Tucson. The crosses. They have a couple of different crosses. There's, I think there's several. This one has loops or has holes on the top and the bottom. This one doesn't. They got birds. Yeah, their pendants are awesome. The ribbon. A heart with some holes in it. Another feather. Like, they're just so cool. So, they have all of this kind of stuff. And they have, like, the connectors for multi-strand designs. But then they have a whole selection of chain. They have a whole selection of charms. Um, I'm partial to their handmade pendants just because I love to support them. And I love to support anything handmade. But... They have everything you need because, like, the rest of it is just really cool complimentary chain. So, if you like large link and you love, like, anti-copper, they have other colors, too. But, like, they just have really great chain. I love them, love them, love them. They're such good people. They really are. And they have ball chain, too. You can tell that's, like, a that's, like, you know, it's, like, 
what's the, it's like art metal chain. It's not quite hematite. Yeah, they're really cool. Really, really cool. You can tell them I sent you. All right, so we're done with this. I'm gonna turn you around. We're gonna take a look at it on the bust and then I'm gonna let you guys go. So let me switch camera, oh gosh. <laughs> Plastic piece of my alt light just fell. <laughs> So it's a little longer than our bust, but it's okay. So you can see how cute. I love it. And I like the little dangles on the bottom, but if you don't like the dangles, you can skip that part altogether. Just cut it off like we did with the other, the other two pieces and just melt it and stick it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like the most amazing piece of jewelry in the entire world, but it is a cool piece. The color combo is top notch and you got to learn a little, a little something, something, to, a little something different with your macrame because macrame is so versatile, but I feel like people get kind of caught up in the bracelets and anklets, bracelets and anklets like, and that's great. That's fine. But if you're looking to kind of like look outside the box a little bit, use it in other ways, use it to make a bail, use it to make like a loop for an earring, make hoop earrings out of it. Like there's so many different things you can do with it. Um, and because it's made out of cord, it's lightweight and bendable and flexible. You can even run like wire as the core which we could have done the exact same thing here, right? And instead of using two pieces of nylon cord, like the s that we were using, you could have used German style or artistic wire as your core, macrame around that, and then wire wrapped it instead of knotting it. Does that make sense? So you've got options. You have so many options. And it's it's a fairly easy technique, like learning square knots once you practice it a little bit. Um, and then you can really kind of play with it and and make multimedia pieces that's my favorite i love pieces that incorporate a little bit of everything so if you're looking to kind of expand your repertoire of like multimedia designs start including some knots in your things right and let me tell you this is not the last of the knots you're going to see this week i've got some really awesome knotted pieces for our Feel Good Friday show. So if you're looking for some kits, I've got some macrame earrings. I've got a really awesome bracelet that's got some gorgeous check glass beads in it. And what's the other thing? Oh, I've got, I have a simple pair of earrings that has some simple knots in it. So um, that's, I'm feeling, I'm, I'm feeling a little naughty. <laughs> you get it? Get it right? You get it? <laughs> okay. All right, my friends. Um, yes. So Ruth and you are going to see some macrame earrings. You're going to see some on Friday. I promise you. I promise you. And if you want to see even more, I'll make you some more. <laughs> no problem. All right, my loves. Thank you so, so much for joining me on this Tuesday. I hope you guys have an amazing week. I'm feeling good. I hope that I've sent some of this good, feel good energy your way to get you all the way through to your feel good Friday. Uh, Vanessa wants to know if you are selling the necklace. I might, I might have to put that in my Etsy shop. Let me think about it and I'll let you know. <laughs> I'll let you know. And if I do, I'll post it so that, so that you can see it. Um, so yeah. Uh, anything else? Don't forget tomorrow is a Michael's class that happens at 2 p.m. Eastern time. We're making some little gemstone earrings that have stars on them out of wire. Uh, Feel Good Friday show is awesome kits. Looking forward to it. Can't wait to see you guys again. Hard wires. I'll see you at 4 p.m. today. Don't be late. I love everybody and I'll see you guys again soon. Okay. Have a great afternoon. Bye.